Shalawan, Shalawan, Shalawan. Kings and Queens clash your sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you already know. 100 kings and 100 queens. Okay, so we're coming in real quick to uh, uh, update y'all on something y'all need to be doing. Um, you know, a lot of uh, kings and queens always act, keep asking about the taxes, um, but the reality of it is um, y'all don't apply to uh, the same things that the citizens do, okay? Now, when y'all file y'all stuff the way y'all want it, um, as the normal citizen, you got to make sure you don't have that estate number. If y'all have that estate number and y'all are... filing normal taxes, then what will happen is it'll trigger the IRS to send you a frivolous filing, meaning you got your estate number for no reason whatsoever. And you're not taking things seriously. Now, I want y'all to know that um, when y'all are doing Y'all taxes for your estates or any tax. You're actually doing it for the estate because the all caps name is dead. It's an instrumentality of the United States. Okay. So you're doing it because you're taking care of commerce within the United States with that name, which belongs to or part of the estate. And the 9-8 trust is filing the taxes or the king of the 9A trust, who is the trustee, is doing it on behalf of the trust, the estate trust. Or excuse me, the estate. So, what this means is, you got to be careful. So, I know Tom Woods told a lot of y'all to do it uh, as you normally would do it, but that is partially true and partially not true. Again, if you got your estate number, because some of y'all came into this group having your estate numbers already. This is why I tell y'all have to do this stuff in order. Now, for those that have their estate number, y'all just starting the seven steps, getting your silver, doing your birth certificates, then next doing your common law copyright and then your assumed name. Well, if you already had your estate number, you need to jump forward and do your 9-8. Because in order for you to do any taxes, okay, and get any return of your lawful money, you need to have a place to put that foreign interest. What code? Fuck your code. And I got some for all these boogers out there always talk. What code you coming from? Let me tell you something. If you're in the foreign, what code are you operating on? You don't know no fucking U.S. code. Try to fuck you operating on the code. You're operating on, I'm coming to the United States, doing trade as a tribal member or a tribal being. And the United States need to reward me. But how is the United States going to reward me if I don't have an account to put it back in? That 9-8 account is only used for you to be able to put it into your foreign bank account. Is a holding sale for your foreign funds. Or you can let it sit in there with the treasury and you can use that to buy stuff within your United States. But you need to make sure that's turned into the private. So if you're buying homes, stuff like that, it needs to be private. And it's purchased straight out. Now, the reason I'm coming in because it's time for y'all to order y'all forms. Okay? Don't order them by the mail. 
You're going to order them online here. So let's click on that. You're going to go down and says, what's forms filed with the IRS? They, I don't know if the IRS know that's a mess up right there. Y'all see that? Iris. They probably know what they mean. They probably know exactly what they're talking about. Says a uh, hundred each for forms. One copy of the corresponding instruction is automatically included. Five copies for each, uh, each for instructions and publications order. Now you're going to go down. Let me tell you where you're going to go. You're going to go to irs.gov forward slash businesses forward slash online hyphen ordering hyphen for hyphen information should be returns. Make sure. We go over here and make sure. Returns hyphen and employer and hyphen employer. Okay. Hyphen returns. Okay. So it's online ordering for information returns and employer returns. And there's a hyphen between every word. Or you can just type that sentence in uh, Google and it'll come up. Okay. Now, we're going to go down here. I'm going to show you what forms y'all going to need for the classes. Order your tax forms. It's going to say order information, returns, and employer returns. Okay. You can do a search right there if you want to. And they give you the instructions, the maximum item quantities. Right now, this is what y'all going to need. Okay, I did an ordering already. Um, let's scroll down. Y'all gonna need go your first thing you're gonna do is go down here where it got rows per page, and you're gonna go to 50. Okay, and you're gonna scroll down. Scroll down. You're gonna get to annual summary returns. You're gonna order 50 of those. Okay. And every page you're going to hit add cart. Continue shopping. Okay. Going to go over. Y'all make sure y'all pay attention. Um, actually, that was, um, let's go back. Well, you might need some for 2022. So that's why you're going to do the 50. On the 2023. You're going to do another 50. You can always order more. Okay. Scroll down. Current. Current means 2023. So you're going to go ahead and order 50 of those. Order 50 of those. 2022, if you don't have none, order about 50 of those. Take care of your last year's. Um, 2023, you're going to do 50 for the B. So you're going to need A's, B's. Okay. I got some for 2022 already. 1099 C cancel debt. 50 of those. If you feel like you got a lot of bills that you need to handle, order a hundred, but they'll let you know and they'll stop you if you have more than what you're supposed to have. 1099 case. You're going to need, uh, since you're dealing with cash, you're going to need about a hundred of those. Real talk. If you got cash out, PayPal, Square, uh, bank credit cards, bank debit cards, y'all going to need those. Okay. Um, you might, miscellaneous income, you're not going to need that. Form 1099 OID current, you're going to need about a hundred of those. Okay. You're going to need the instructions. Do three. Okay. So that way you can share with your group. Um, anybody you're dealing with. Instructions for 1099B. You're going to order about three of those. Anytime you get instructions, you're going to get three. So that way you can sit down with someone. Tell them this is what is going on. The reason you're getting 2022 and 2023. Because there are changes. Anytime they update it with a new year. Then there are changes somewhere. So you want to stay on the up and up on that. 
trying to hold this thing. I wanted to put it on my head, but nah. Okay, um, 1099, INT, and OID, okay? You're going to do that. You're going to get about three instructions for that. 1099 instructions for the K, 1099K, you're going to get three for that. Always get more than enough. 1099S instructions, get one of those. Y'all need to study that. Now, you got the 39, uh, that's not the one we need there. So you're going to hit add cart. Hit add cart. Then hit continue shopping. Then already added it. So you're going to click the next. Uh, you got W2s, W2 uh, A's, uh, W2 C's. If y'all had a job, get the corrected wage statement. Okay. Probably ain't going to need that many of those, but depending on how many jobs you had, order in just in case you mess up. So if you had three jobs, order three per job, and that would be, if you had three jobs, that would be nine, W2C, okay? Now, scroll down. You don't need no more... Hit add cart. Every page hit add cart. Continue shopping. Go to the next page. And that looks like that's it. Okay. So what you're going to do. You're going to go back up. And where it says items. Right there. Click that item button. Shopping cart. Okay. And look at everything you got. We got the 1096. 2022. Just in case you had a job, I mean, you had some stuff going on that you haven't filed uh, in 2022 taxes, then you're going to go ahead and do that. New Year, uh, 1096, um, you're going to need, mm, I would do about 100, to be honest with you. Okay. And this is why you're going back through your summary so you can know exactly what you need. You need to think, think this stuff over. Because um, you're going to have to do this on every receipt that you had. All bank statements. You know, you're going to still have to do it on with your 1099K, PayPal, uh, jobs. You need your 1099B for 2023. After you get your credits from the treasury, you're going to go back and do a 1099C to cancel the debt. Because the treasury then already paid it. Now, y'all need to know the benefits of doing the OID process. And I never really talked about this. And that's how I uh, beat this child support case for uh, my client. Um, <clears throat> or the straw man. Let's call, call him that. Call it that. Um, it was with an OID. So anytime you have an OID, you got to have an 8281. Um, I did have an 8281. I also had the instrument. Okay, here's the 8281 right here, by the way. That's the 8281. Uh, the instrument, let me show you this. Okay, and this is for an insurance company. I want y'all to see that very well. It was a $50,000 life insurance policy. It was paid off with silver. Okay. They are made the debtors here. Okay, y'all see down there. Um, they got the UPC number. Uh, down in the reference data box, you see it down there. It should have had the 13-digit barcode there, but anyway, it's kind of a mistake on my behalf. Now, when you send this stuff to the treasury, let me show you something. This is the proof that you're competent. It's telling them they got the 1099A, B, the policy, the deed poll, and the original payment, which is the silver. Okay? Insurance tracking number. That go right there. Now, At the beginning of the policy application, because you know they use the applications to create cursive numbers, 
I put the tracking number on there as well. The rest of this is the policy, the 1099As, the 1099Bs. And the reason I'm cutting in to tell y'all this is because um, a lot of people do this something for value and all they get is their bills paid. If you do it correctly, if you do it correctly, what will happen is, what will happen is, and you show your silver pay in it, anytime you do a subject for value, always say, return principal to the same, the same is who, the same is the company. You don't have to say the same. You can just put return interest, I mean, excuse me, it's return principal to, if your phone bill is T-Mobile, you're going to say to T-Mobile, right? Now, in this case of this, since this policy was paid off, $50,000 worth of silver, and they owe, what, $20 million, I think it's $20 million, $10 million in uh, lawful money. The interest, the $10 million is going to go into the 498 account, which is who? Which is the trust, the foreign trust, on behalf of the all caps name, which is a straw man. Now, it was already paid off. I got my proof of payment because it's stamped, all that with the silver. They can no longer give that principal to that insurance company. If it was T-Mobile, they can't give it to uh, T-Mobile now because you already settled the debt. It's done. So a lot of people wonder, why do y'all got to use silver if the treasury going to pay it? No. In the private, you're handling your own matters. I use my silver to settle this debt. Treasury, you went on your job. You ain't do it fast enough, so I did it. So now you need to pay me back or pay my straw man back. It's $50,000. So what is the treasurer going to do? They're going to cut a check. And that check is going to go to who? Right here will be Stevie Tyrone Thompson, which is your straw man. So I'm telling all y'all this right now who have your assumed name. Go to your bank. Get an account. Under a sole priority ship. Under your straw man name. And yes, use the social. Use the social. Because now the social is where it needs to be. Okay? Or if you wanted to, you could, you could do a, a trust and use the social. It would be a revocable account. Revocable. And they have to use the social. The reason it's revocable because what is that saying? And the bank showed me this. If it's a revocable account at your bank account, what that means is the only person can revoke that account, revoke that account or trust is the grantor. So who is the grantor? The grantor is the all caps name, but really the lowercase name. Um, and that means that they're what? Still alive. A revocable account is a, what you want to call an express trust. People don't know this. People think an express trust is just an express trust. No, 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 no. That's just a name for the revocable trust. It's the name for a living trust. That's just a, a, a subcategory name. It's actually a revocable trust or a, li, uh, 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 how do you want to call it? Living trust. Because the only way it can be revocable is the grantor is still alive. <clears throat> now, if you do your all caps name as a bank account, you're going to do it as a sole priority ship. They're going to check your, your state's website to see if that name is active. If it's in good standing. If it's in good standing, guess what? Nobody can put a lien on that bank account. Now, let me give y'all a hint of something y'all ne all need to do. And I did this when I, uh, last year, beginning of the very beginning of last year. I contacted suretybonds.com 
and I put up a a a quote for a million dollar bond on the straw man. So if your straw man assumed name is in good standing with your state and you got a bond and they haven't put a claim on the bond and you got a Duns and Bradstreet and it's showing no bad things in there, guess what? No one can freeze your bank account. They got to put a claim on the bond first. So this is what meant by licensed and bonded are insured, licensed, and bonded. But you really don't need to have both of uh, the insurance and the bond because the bond handles that. So it would be a payment bond. Okay? And as I was doing some research um, last night, I found some more stuff, out, but I'll share that with the group. Um, so yeah, that's what y'all want to do. So that way, since it's paid off, going back to it, that means the treasurer will have to cut the check back to your straw man name. Guess what? Y'all can spend those funds. But now what you're doing with that is now you're going all over again, doing the uh, something for value 1099 ORDs, 1099As, 1099B, selling the debt with every piece of fiat y'all spent. It's more work. So this is why you don't supposed to be playing around with the fiat currency. You can get that fiat check to the bank and tell them to negotiate it. Go run me my money. Let them handle that. But if you choose to spend that check that the treasurer cut you back, only from the principal now, not the interest. The interest need to go in your 9 8 account. If you don't have a 9 8 account, you better get it. It need to be according to my video. Your all caps name with the word trust at the end. No estate trust, just trust at the end. The trustee need to be your king name or queen name. That's your first name spelled backwards. If your name is Joe, it'll be Oj. E Oj. King E O J. King E Oj. If his last name is Jumping Jack, it'll be of the Jumping Jack estate. So King Eaj of the Jumping Jack Estate. That is the proper way to do your name. Or, according to the Treasury, it can be um, King Eaj uh, under declaration of the Jumping Jack Estate. See? So you see how both of them line up? Because it's showing the name of the estate in your name as the trustee. You got your form 56. You got your 8822B. You got your 2848. You got your durable power of attorney too. Now remember the durable power of attorney is for the living. The form 56 is for the dead. So one's for the beneficiary, one for the dead. It's showing y'all the benefit of paying it off before the treasury pays it off. Now the treasury owes the all caps name. Remember the interest was on this. If you see, just look at this. Let's go down to this. 50000 is already paid. They will cut that check back to Stevie Tyrone Thompson. Now you got the interest of 10, 10 million. That would go where? To the Foreign Granters Trust. And it would sit there with the United States Treasury until I give them a bank account to transfer over to the foreign country. Or there's another account you can get right here in the United States, but I am not telling nobody till y'all graduate. And even them, you better keep it secret. Don't go out here telling nobody what the hell it is. Because it's because of you, they go out here and try to jump the gun and you had the ass arrested. Now, let's finish it up, finish this up. I'm sorry about the camera. I'm trying to hold this thing right till I get used to it. And shout out to uh King Abu for giving me this uh camera holder here. All right, so I'm just going over. You want to go over just looking at everything. 
And after you've gone down the line, seen everything you got, man, just hit enter shipping address. And you're going to put your first and last name. That's going to be your king name. Let me show you. I got King Stevion of Cityside. Company name is The Estate. Okay? United States. I got my treasury's address there. Because all the finance things go to him. And then you continue to order. Now it's done. You make sure your address is correct. Make sure your forms are all correct. If they're not correct, you're going to go back up here and you're going to edit cart. You hit place your order. I'm not going to place an order because I already placed mine. Okay? I think that's about it. Everything I need to show y'all, tell y'all, um, <clears throat> make sure, um, when y'all doing these things, y'all have y'all, uh, let me, let me grab some real quick. Let me see. Well, there's another insurance company, but you got your 1099 approval letters. Congratulations. And that's for another insurance company right there. Okay. But you got to have that along with your um, your um, see that one right there. That was a hundred thousand. That turned into twenty million. So I got a lot of stuff that I'm getting ready to send out to the treasury. We're trying to handle this while I handle the university at the same time. So Y'all got to be patient with me because I got to work on my estates too. Okay, but make sure y'all have those because if this is for the, this one right here is for the uh, A and then the other I have is for the B. These are the things that go to the United States Treasury to show that there's a debt. Also, that's owed to you. And show that they're truly the debtor. The 1099 OID, um, clearly shows that you are the issuer and yes you are y'all got to understand that you are being rewarded and I want y'all to repeat this you are being rewarded for doing business with the United States corporations again you are being rewarded for doing business with the United States corporations. Why? Because you are the foreigner. So they give you the lawful money. Okay? And you spend that in the foreign, in the private. Okay? Um, you, you, you receive a bill in the mail. Okay? Okay, watch this. And I did this in the last video to prove it to you. I got this. Okay? So I stamped it. I settled it. $50,000. Right? I settled it. It's the application and everything. Um, but I'm the holder. I'm the holder in due course on this. So what am I going to do with this? I'm going to sell this to the United States. And they're going to create a bond on the company. Why? See, I already settled it. So if they came faking like this company here, came faking like they were the creditor, they ain't gave me nothing. They ain't gave me nothing. But this is going to be paid off once the treasury gets it. If they didn't accept that silver. But once they see the 1099s, then they know it's already paid. So it no sense for the treasury to give it to anybody but me, give it back to me to replace what was taken, which was my silver. This is filed. I got a file number. I got my, of course this is for the other one, I got to print the other ones up. But I got my proof. 
These were accepted. These were accepted. Okay. So since those were accepted, and I got, got my UCC, I got to have my invoices. Once I attach the invoices, they're ready to send out. But since I don't have all the, the, the tax forms that I needed, I cannot complete these projects. I got about six or seven of them. Seven of them. Now I want to show y'all something else real quick. Um, show y'all how I did another contract. See this page right here? And I got the barcode of the affidavit of ownership at the bottom showing I own this contract. So that's one of 13. Let's move that out the way. So I want to show y'all this. Now, here's the first page. And see, if you see down there, it has an, a number, a document number from the insurance company. I just put my barcode on there, stamped it with that. It's numbered. And then I go down. This is the contract. I took it over. It was insurance. Let me see the back of this. Let's see. Um, yeah, and this is for like a accidental life insurance. Even on the insurance policy, guys, let me tell y'all something, give y'all some knowledge. You never put your children, excuse me, or your, your, your blood down as the beneficiaries. This is how you stop all the fighting and arguing when you die. You put the estate as the beneficiary. And the ones that manage the estate is the foreign trust. Your sons and your daughters are the trustees of that trust. And their sons and daughters are the beneficiaries of those funds that come from that um, life insurance policy. Those funds have to be used, of course, if they bury you, whatever, um, on your private land, by the way. So that way you can be buried in the dirt. No cremation. Okay, because you got to go back into Mother Earth. And blossom back up with that grass. That'll be you. Um, <clears throat> I get into that another day. Um, but um, those funds, that check will be cut to the estate, and no one can cash that check. But the trustee or uh, the fiduciary that's over the estate, which is the trust. See. So now nobody can go grabbing nah, 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 and all of your things will go into that estate and the trust will manage that estate in order to make for the beneficiaries, which is your grandbabies. If you don't want to have grandbabies, then you ass out. But you do have a job running your father's or mother's estate. Be bliss from that. Okay. Go look up the percentage of what you get from that. You got to understand, you just don't use the funds. So say for instance, right now, I was to go. And there's the 50,000 50, will be used for burial. And that's it. And uh, of course, the, the trustees or the executive would manage any bills that would be left, which it shouldn't be because everything is trained uh, to my daughters and sons and showing them how to handle these 1099A paperwork and documents. Okay, so that interest there will be used to go back in and do things, create businesses, invest, make more funds, and then those funds go to the beneficiaries, which is the uh, grandbabies. Okay? And all the while... Anything that's made from this, say when they take uh, 1 million and they make 10 million. Well, the, the trustees get a percentage of that profit, that gross. Then they distribute and take care of the, the, uh, the expenses and then it goes to the grandbabies, which is generation skipping. 
generation skipping, and then the grandbabies are not taxed. That's how it goes. You skip a generation and the third generation is not taxed. That's why the scripture says, Blessed is he who leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And we know what a child is. A child is a corporation. But, of course, in their world, they won't be taxed. And you still got to get an assumed name on everybody. Or have your common law copyright operating within commerce. And under the IRS code, um, let me see this real quick. This might be the code. I don't think that's the code. I don't got the code. Yes, I do. Okay, right here. Go to uh, 26 U.S.C. 1231. And when you go there, you will see under C. It says a, uh, let's go down, property held by the taxpayer and it goes down. A patent invention, model, or design, whether or not patented. See? So if it's patented, that means it's within the United States. And they did it and they're the custodials over it. But if it's not, then you are in the private. A secret formula. Our process. A copyright. That's your common law copyright. Now you see why you get hit these corporations up with a copyright uh, infringement of 100 million. Because even in the private, it don't have to be copywritten in the goddamn public. It's in the private. And that goes back to what it says, whether or not patented. Your name is also a patent. If you look at the copyright we have, it's a patent and it's a copyright. Watch this. A, li a literary. A musical. Artistic composition. King Lamont, you see that? So rather, it goes back to this whether or not patented. So it does not have to be registered with the United States. Because it's private. Why? It's property. It says it's property right here. For sale to customers in the ordinary course of his trade or business. Property of a kind with, uh, would include properly be includable in the inventory of the taxpayer if on hand at the close of the taxable year. Now, so if you're operating with your business, or your assume your name, copyright name, and you're doing commerce with even a assumed name from your Secretary of State, it's still good to do taxes on. This is why I tell y'all these states who don't want to give y'all y'all assumed name, they're bullshit ass liars. Because under their codes and their statutes, it say you must have a an assumed name to do business within the states. They don't want you to have it so that way they can use a derivative of your freaking name and let all these other people rape your name. Yeah, we're going to rape it. Your name screaming, ah, name screaming, straw man over there screaming. And you looking like, you a straw man. I'm the real being. I ain't helping your ass. <laughs> but you better go help it because they robbing your name. Now when you take control of that name, now your prostitute look good on Duns and Bradstreet, just like it says in the song, my non-UCC, go listen to it. But regardless if your state want to give you one or not, once you file your tax return with this name showing that you use it in commerce, that's your 1099-A's, 1099-B's, your, your violations to the uh, opposing party that violated your copyright, you got proof of that, they, and you put a, put their ass in court, the state of whoever do the assumed names, put their ass in court. Ain't a damn thing they can say. You put them in federal court. Because they're denying you an assumed name, denying you a way to do business. See, if you don't have that assumed name, you can't get a bond on that assumed name. They know this. Then child support can come use your name. Any way they want to. A derivative of your name ain't no more than an assumed name that they got with the Secretary of State or they ain't even registered that they're operating with. They the one created that assumed name. If your name is John Alex Doe and they call you J. X. J. Alex Doe, that's their derivative. That ain't even your name. And you the dumb idiot went to court. 
You just accepted it under uh, 18 U.S.C. Uh, what is 12 U.S.C. 1840? I want to say 1342, 1341, 1342. We tell you you don't supposed to accept that that mail. So now you committed mail fraud just as them, and now they got you in on a fraud. Stop letting these people fool y'all. They're already operating with your name. And the reason you doing the assumed name is to stop them from using any derivatives. They're operating in commerce and they're forcing you into commerce. They're forcing your hand into commerce. Just like the IRS says here, whether or not patented. Same thing with the copyright. Whether or not copywritten. Gonna show y'all something here. So, if you look at this page here, this is the, uh, this is next to the last page, right? You got thirteen, I mean eleven of thirteen right here. Okay, and it's back to the Omaha people. Okay, so, so. We got this right here. Now, this is a page where I should put the notary acknowledgement on here. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is at the bottom of this, I'm going to put the notary acknowledgement right here with the notary sign and I sign for the straw man. Okay, it really need to be endorsed on the back of the first page. But the reason I'm getting this done, the notary acknowledgement, this is what you're supposed to do on all bills, to show that you own this document, this contract. You're the holder of it. It's your job to take it to the treasury and have them pay the bill. But since you already handled it, all the funds that you use from your silver, from your foreign account, that's why you got to keep your book ledger. What you're going to do, when you get this back, signed, I mean, and stamped by the notary, you're going to get it. Um, you're going to actually get it an apple steel because you're coming in from the foreign. Well, no, no, because this came from another company in the United States. Excuse me. So, yeah, you're going to authenticate this for... The country where the funds are going to go, which is Kenya. Mine's in Kenya with the trust. So now you got your full faith and credit. You can get it done on the federal level if you wanted to. Um, and once you get that authenticated, then you got your proof. See, because the Secretary of the Treasury is going to know that it's authenticated for a certain country. So that's where it's directing them to put the funds in exchange for that contract. Okay? I'm giving y'all some, some, some strong knowledge here. Um, telling y'all what y'all are going to need. You're going to need a 1099A, 1099B, uh, 1099C. You're always going to come last after the Treasury give you your funds back. After the, you know they gave you your credits. And your principal back, then you can do the 1099C. You never do a 1099C uh, prematurely, thinking it's going to cancel out some debt. You don't own, listen, you do own the contract, okay? But you got to prove. See, when you do your 1099C, you got to show them, before you do the 1099C, you got to have the OID to show that you're the issuer. So how can you cancel something that you don't hold or you're claiming that you're not the holder of? You got to first show that you're the holder. Now, you also got to do a 1099A to show that you did not abandon it. You're going to do the 1099A in the description box. You're going to put the contract. Contract. The contract. Contract. That's in the description box. And those amounts that I showed y'all. Let me show you. See that? 50000 right there? That's the principal. 
See? Return principle two. See? And then the fair market value is what? Times 200 since it was done with silver. That makes it 10 million. So that's what goes in your fair market value box. And in the description box, that's what you're going to put. This The contract. 1099B. 1099B is going to show the 50000 because of silver. See, $50,000 silver payment. See, it says silver payment. Shares of silver, because they're getting shares of your silver. This is why you put it in your ledger to balance the books. And so you're giving it to the IRS so that way they can balance the books. If you're not showing this stuff to the IRS, then how could they balance the books on the public side? And then the treasury gets put on notice. When you get a frivolous file, they're saying you haven't given enough information or you're not taking this thing serious. And the silver comes from this barcode number. 655-847-000999. So all y'all around here just stamping bills with y'all silver and ain't balancing y'all books, not doing 1099A, B, C, well, do the OID before you do the C. So it'd be A, B is out of order. A, B, O, I, D, then the C. King Stevion, let us see your B, boy. You think B stands for boy? Okay, let's, let me show y'all then, god dang it, y'all hoodlums. All right. Let's go here. What does it say up here? This is the B, 1A. Silver shares from EAN number. Boom. Date acquired. That's when the contract was stamped. That's why I got a 2022. Proceeds. 100000 And this is one of the other contracts I'm showing you, by the way. So that matches. Both of those match. And then you deduct that from that amount. Where's that other amount at? Damn, where's that amount at? 100000 Yeah, 100000 It should come up to what you did do the deductions from the $20 million. It should come down to 19900000 Okay? And then you're going to long-term gain. Gross proceeds. It might be short-term sometimes. Uh, check if the uh, base is reported to the IRS. Yes, because you got to turn this into the IRS. And then you're bartering them out. That's the hundred thousand you bought it with with your silver. And this is for another contract. It's not the same one as fifty thousand. I got two insurance contracts I'm dealing with. Okay, so that's the amount you're bartering with. That's the principal. So now you got proof that you gave them a hundred thousand. This the uh, approval letter. This ten ninety nine B approval letter. Ten ninety nine A. Approval letter. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and show y'all this because I know y'all itching. Itching. Y'all itching, boy. Y'all itching. Can you show me your 1099A? Okay. It's the trust. Or excuse me, it's the estate. They're going to mutual home harbor. Okay. Okay. It says fair market value is 20 million. So with 100,000, it goes to the description box. Lawful demand money, 12 U.S.C., 412, 18 U.S.C., 8. So what I'm asking for here, I'm supposed to put the contract there, but I want my lawful money. That's all I'm asking for here. Okay? The, the Treasury might return the principal anyway. I'm quite sure they are in a form of a check, or they will sometimes. And that's two kings this happened to. They will contact the company. And tell them to cut the check in that amount. Depends on what the principal is. Because if the treasury have to do it, they're going to send a CID after them. Okay, I hope y'all got that. And then down here, you got the lender's EIN. Okay, the borrower's EIN. Uh, the 
contract number right there. I don't care about all that. Yeah, they blurred that out anyway. King, you ain't showing that shit. And then, yes, they were liable. So now you send their ass an invoice. So the, in the packet, the invoice got to go with it too. You need your 1041 voucher. You need your 1041 T. You need your 1041. And you need a invoice to the company and the 1099A approval, 1099B approval. If you don't have a UCC yet, that's fine. But this actually puts the icing on the cake. And they're going to get a copy of this along with the invoice. Because they owe. And they know it ain't a fucking game. And y'all do the same thing to the uh, people on your credit file. This is how you handle this shit. Now, let me show you something before we go. This is not everything. There's one last thing that goes on the front of this. Front of this. Okay. Okay. Because you got to accept it. And you got to put an order in. It's an acceptance order. Now, on mine. Yeah, actually, did I? I think I did. I think we did do child support on a UCC. But if you're not on a UCC yet, you do not do it prematurely until you get to step seven. The state is watching, okay? So kings and queens, I gave y'all this process. If you want to know it very, very cleanly, <laughs> you have to be in our school, our university. I don't like it in school. University. Now, let me say this. Classes start Wednesday. It's supposed to start it Monday. But I'll finish some, some things up. Um, Got to handle my own business. Um, I cannot forsake my own business for my own bloodline. Okay? Thank all y'all who've been patient with me and, and, and Tom Woods and the rest of us. But this weekend, I'll be honest, I was wore out. It, it, it came down on me. Sometimes you'll go, 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 go. Man, I was, my energy level was gone. And my body needed rest. Even the most high rested. Okay. Um, Before I get out of here. What else I was going to say? I think that's about it. Um. Again, I thank all y'all for being patient. Um, those that are trying to get in, y'all more than welcome to take the test. But the test grading and retakes won't be to the last week of this month. Every month, we'll be doing the retake of the test, the grading and the retaking of the test for those new to get in on the first step. Okay? By that time, you know, if most people are not ready at the end of the month to move to step two, then we're going to extend that out for the second month and they're going to finalize it being two months. We already said it's going to take two months to do step one. Okay? Because of the time on the birth certificate, authentication in Apple Steel, and uh, the thing coming back from the Department of the State in Washington or Virginia, which they both work together. Um, yeah. So, no one else is getting in. That's it. Locked. We locked. Okay? Let me make this very clear. A lot of you was in on, a, on the call. A lot of, every last one of you, matter of fact, who heard it. I said where to send your test to. Where to request the test. Where to send the registration to. Where to request the registration or the entry form. If you haven't took the test, if you ain't even called me to talk to me, okay? If you haven't called to talk to me, then you're not just going to get in. I need to know who the heck you are. That's one of the reasons why the test is there. I want to know who the heck you are. 
Um. Y'all who are new trying to come in for next month, June 1st, you, it, like I said, you're more than welcome to go ahead and take the test. Put in a request to cityside2006 at gmail.com. C-I-T-Y-S-I-D-E 2006 at gmail.com. Going to take that test and send it back to the Yahoo. Cityside2006 at yahoo.com. If you do not follow those directions, I'll throw it in the trash. And don't be wondering why you ain't been registered on the website for those who are supposed to send, request the registration at the Gmail and resend it. Not resend it, excuse me, but send it to the Yahoo for filing. If I got one person looking at my Yahoo for filing and they never receive it, guess what? You ain't going to be filed in on the database. Your name and your information. Don't reply back to the email because it's going to go to Proton. Don't send it back to the Gmail because that's where you got the application from. Excuse me, I don't like applications. The document from. I don't like document because it says doc. Jeez. Of course we dock on the land. Okay? Please. I'm seeing that a lot of you are not following instructions. Maybe y'all like, fuck your instructions. Say that to the treasurer when you're trying to get your foreign currency or your foreign money. See what they tell you. You won't get jack. Now, let me finish this. It says artistic com composition, a letter or memorandum, or a similar property held by a taxpayer. I'm not no taxpayer because it's held by the estate, you idiot. The taxpayer, the, the taxpayer is the estate. But it don't pay taxes. That's why the, the foreign trust comes in. Now it says a taxpayer described in paragraph 3 of section 1221A. Now what's funny, it says a letter or a memorandum. A memorandum can be a letter to your unborn seeds. And you know what? You can use that letter to your unborn seed or your little baby who came and talked yet. You can write a letter to her, to her or him. And you can put that in commerce. Because it has value. Sentimental value. Come on now. Y'all better get with this program. Y'all wondering how I'm doing these lyrics the way I'm doing them. It got real estate on it. And by the way, there's only three more left. Three more left and $50. Three more left. There was a king that called and he ain't do nothing. Hey man, it's about to be gone. I told y'all it's going up after that. So it will be going up to 100. I would say it 150, but I'm going to do it at only 100 after the three is gone. Cash out, dollar sign, K-I-N-G-S-T-E-V-I-A-N. And everybody else, hit me up, do my email to let me know that y'all ordered. Ordered. Especially those on cash out, because I don't have your mailing address. How am I going to mail you these lyrics if you ain't giving me your address? Hit me up to my email, cityside2006 at gmail.com. Let me know that you uh, tender payment for the lyrics, silver lyrics, silver paint lyrics, art lyrics. That's what they are. It's art, silver, lyrics. So it's all this what they're talking about here. A copyright. It's dang show a memorandum. It's musical. It's a musical composition. It can be a, a literary too. Or similar property. That's your real estate. And all of this is in commerce. That's why I told y'all. Y'all can use these lyrics. Here's your proof right here. 
You can use these lyrics in commerce to settle your debts. Once you make a copy of that and mail it off to your bill collector with a copy of the bill, media mail, you got a tracking number that goes with that. When you come home, go to USPS and hit tracking. Put that tracking number in there and when you click on it, it'll give you the option to extend it 10 years. Should be anywhere from seven, six, six or seven dollars all the way up to $9.99. Extend it out 10 years. Print that off. About five copies of that. Now you got your proof that the company received it. You got $20 million in value. Once you start operating it in commerce and you give them a copy of those lyrics, you got your 4797 form you got to do. You got your 1041D you got to do. That was another one you got to do. Let me see here. You got your 80, 80, uh, 288. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. In fact, let's look over here. What does that say? Schedule D, 1040. 1041T. 1041V vouch. You got to do that. Of course. That's your 1041. I know y'all saying, man, King, you got to clean up in that, buddy. Hey, man, my paperwork all over the goddamn place, I'm telling you. If it's over a million dollars, then it'd be the 8302. $47.97. Got that? God dang, boy. What was one that was missing? Schedule D1040. That is one that is missing. One that's missing. Hold on real quick. There's one that is missing. I don't want to mislead you. Ten forty one, eighty three oh two, ten forty one T D. Oh, there we go. It's the schedule E form ten forty. Just gave you all the documents y'all need to file. Okay? One that I just found out about was this one. 8288. U.S. withholding tax return for certain depositions by foreign persons. Okay? It's a deposition. You got rid of your silver. That, along with this, where we at? Let's find this thing. This one right here. It's $47.97. Sales of business property. Now sometimes you might have to use this one because it says sales or exchanges of property used in a trade or business. That's what goes with this code right here. 26 USC 1231. And the IRS spoke about this code in the instructions of this, they refer back to this. So the people are always talking about a damn code. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Listen, these tax instructions tell you what code they're coming from. But I never knew about the codes. I just knew by looking at the document what was needed. Then when I read the instructions, they refer back to the codes. I don't read no codes. I got a surprise for y'all coming up soon, too. That's why I say fuck the codes. All the codes. Y'all gonna find out about them. In this video, I'm gonna do Man, man, I got a lot over here to go that I got going on. But we're getting it all organized, very orchestrated, like a sympathy. No, sympathy? 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 I think that's how you say it. <laughs> King, you wrong, boy. All right. I got a new song coming out. Um, 
working on that. Working on the gold album. So that way people won't have to wait anymore when the albums come out. I told y'all at the beginning, the month, a uh, year, it's going to take four to five months to do the silver album. Some people miss that. This is why, because you see, we know the, 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 the agent's going to come in and try to infiltrate. They're going to throw monkey wrenches in. You know, they're going to hold us back. So it ain't just going to go straight. They don't want these assets out. They don't. Okay. There is a winner for the lyrics of the, uh, well, not the lyrics, but they have, we had a drawing. If you want the lyrics, you can purchase the lyrics. $50 is on three left. Um, and if y'all one of the ones that's going in right now trying to purchase it past the three, I'm just going to refund your money back, the tender back. And, uh, or if you want to just get the silver dollar certificate, you can't. Okay? After the, you know, the uh, silver lyrics thing went out. Um, the drawing winner is Queen O'Shawn. That's who it is. Queen O'Shawn, you won. Okay? I did the pulling of it, scrolling up, scrolling down, scrolling up, up and down about three times, then I hit you. Okay? And I found it funny because you were like, please tell me I won. Yes, you won, Queen. So congratulations, congratulations, Clash of Sword for the Queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations on your $20 million painting. I'll show that picture at the end of this video going out, playing the song. Uh, saying I want to thank you. That's going to be the song I play at the end of this video. Um, so, congratulations. We'll try to do a drawing for something every couple weeks. Maybe a copper album, maybe a silver album. If I get the silver album, I'll do a drawing on that. Um, might do another painting. But, uh, congratulations on that painting, Queen. All right. And, uh, thanks for everybody who participated in the drawing. Um, everybody who passed their test. The 60 that got in, the 60 to 80 uh, kings and queens that got into the university. Um, and we're looking forward to having more come in on the next go around, which is June 1st. Okay. Remember, anybody new that want to join the kings and queens to get into the university, um, make sure you request the test at Gmail. Fill out the test. You're going to watch the first five videos on the playlist called Secure Private Credit. The one with the shoe on it. The one with the 40-some videos on it. You're going to watch, on, watch only the first five. Take note. Watch those videos at least three times each before you try to submit the test. Because you only get three tries and then you're out. We had one king that had actually striked out. Because my heart was in it, I let him back in. Okay? But next time... Anybody who failed more than three times, that's it. That is it. You have to wait a whole another month. Okay? So that is it, kings and queens. Uh, Queen O'Shawn, uh, hit me up later on so I can get your information. Go ahead and do your UCC. Uh, I got the, uh, I can do the uh, assignment. Your certificate, all that, you're good. You're good. 20 mil. All right? So, I love you kings and queens all. Uh, remember, you you got any questions or anything, hit me on the uh, chat line. Just go to Google, type in King Stevion and put Premier Chat. And then they'll give you the link. And then you click on that. You register on their site. And then you can... Uh, Put like $30 on there and then call me because it's, I lowered it down to 10 minutes talk time. Whatever you got a question on, make sure you get it done quick. All right? They will extend it out if you got, you know, a lot to ask or you're long-winded. Um, that's it.
If y'all use this information to get free, do not blame me. Blame the L-O-R-D. Won't he do it? Oh yes, he'll do it. But what you need to do is get this knowledge and start to pursue it. I'm King Stevion, representing the 100 Kings and the 100 Queens. I am out. Peace. We are trying. We are trying. We won't ever die We'll bliss not miss till the end of time Heaven and earth may pass away But we tribe will live from the words of say We scream, check, make, cause we got our stakes The Lord sent me so there's higher stakes There's higher learning, higher earning Lawful money through it I'm burning No more yearning, the table's turning Took it back from the Europeans, now we're ferment The light is deal, it's the art of the deal Shower like Trump Tower so the love is real Now how you feel, we got the farming fields Not like man, Santa's all mic is all in the way, moving out the way So I can thank the Lord for sending me your way thank you